Hello everyone and welcome to Festive Tech Calendar 2021. Big thanks to the organizers of this event and especially for Azure Greg putting that post and making sure we can get awesome sessions into this calendar year. All right, let's look what session will be next in this series of events. So what we see here is all about Azure Bicep configuration file how you can use the config files why to use them and how to customize them to increase your productivity and have an awesome uh, experience with Azure so to get that awesome experience uh, I'm going to actually start everything from the beginning so you get a good grasp and understanding and a little bit about myself here it's written, I have been MCT since 2007 and had the chance to learn about Azure since 2016. So around five years I'm playing with that. And I run the Cloud Marathoner blog post uh, where I share about Cloud and Microsoft Azure journey and encourage everyone to share useful tips and bits and help each other. And I'm active member uh, of the Cloud Launch and Learn team and you can find me there while presenting the session on Azure, moderating or helping with Ideaton, Cloud Marathon events or anything where you know community needs me. Okay enough about myself, I would like to know more about you and please feel free to get connected with me on LinkedIn or Twitter and uh, share your interests. Please also type that in comments if you would like. All right. That's it, let's jump into the actual uh, event and see what we are going to cover today. So first we will start with what is Azure Bicep language? And then we'll look into why learn this new language, what it will bring. Then we'll look into how we customize that using Bicep configuration files. Then we'll, look, we'll shortly look into, then we will shortly look into best practices with Bicep and then we'll have a couple of demos uh, to, sh uh, to kind of expand our understanding and utilize the Bicep config file. All right, I hope that sounds interesting to you. First, uh, what is Azure Bicep? Not everyone might heard about this yet because Azure Bicep is, is still evol evolving and it didn't reach the version 1.0. I will show the current version from terminal, but this is basically a domain specific language or that's the, uh, so this Azure Bicep is this uh, domain specific language, which you can use to provision and manage Azure resources. And the purpose of Azure Bicep is to simplify the resource creation and management experience with a cleaner syntax and more code reuse. This new language aims to make it easier to write infrastructure as code for developers and DevOps engineers that typically create ARM templates targeting Azure Resource Manager APIs. So the Azure ARM template is a templating engine if you already know about that, whereas uh, and Azure ARM template engine is using JSON representation while Azure Bicep is a way to define those Azure resources as a code and we'll look into them. But in the nutshell, what um, Azure Bicep code does is they transpile them into ARM template JSON files. So a valid JSON, uh, a valid Azure Bicep file will always compile and transpile into ARM template JSON. But it is much easier to manage Azure Bicep than big growing JSON files, that's for sure. Next, I wanna give you this, um, one of the important things is why you should learn Azure Bicep, right? Because you can accomplish um, similar things using the ARM JSON templates. So what, what are the good things that you learn from Azure Bicep that you have to invest some time? And this logo on the top, you see it's an ARM template logo, while the Azure Bicep is this robotic arm that basically helps you to manage Azure Bicep more cleanly. So 
as I will give you 10 reasons why Azure Bicep is a good investment of your time. First, it's easy to understand and maintain and maintain the code. And you will see that in the example, it has day one support from Azure. Anything that get updated on Azure API is going to be available right away on Azure Bicep. Then it has, it's a transparent obstruction over ARM layer. ARM stands for Azure Resource Manager. And it has an awesome tooling in Visual Studio Code. And I will show that Bicep extension. It has clean code syntax. It has uh, code reuse uh, via modularities. And it has deep integration with Azure. It has nice pre-flight validations to make sure that your deployment doesn't fail the midway. And it has no state management like the other third-party tools like Terraform require. And it has a production support starting starting from the version v, uh, from the version 0 0.3. All right, uh, I hope that's good. But let's look into a sample Azure Bicep file so that we can get better grasp. Now I switch to the Visual Studio Code, and this is the wrapper called Bicep Starter. You can get that. Uh, you can actually switch and use this one by uh i'm going to show that on the github now github okay let's go to the github uh every code that you see here is under my github account here uh if you go and actually this is my github credentials as you see here all right just type this one and you will get this and then in repositories, you will see that there is a bicep test. So the file that I'm showing you is actually everything is coming from this bicep test uh, GitHub repo. All right. So let me go back now to the uh, resource group. So here I open that uh, GitHub repo that I just presented you, which is called actually the bicep test. All right. I'm going to switch back now to Visual Studio Code. And here uh, under the samples folder, you have the file called module-deployment-bicep. And um, as you see here, it has target score, which means it's going to deploy this Azure resource into the subscription level. It has param parameters defined like in any programming language. And then it has a resource, resource type, name, location. So as you see, it has a string interpolation here to define a variable and uh, it has modules. Modules are for reuse. For example, if you want a uh, parameterized storage to be provisioned here, then uh, and we want to see what actually going to be provisioned, we can always uh, press on control key on our keyboard and it became as a link. And if you click that, it will navigate to that parameterized storage bicep where you get the information about this storage resource and how it is parameterized. So uh, I'm going to go back to the main file. Uh, another example is where we are using this Linux VM in order to go and set it up. All right, so all things, uh, uh, everything is defined on this file. So it's clean. You don't get this um, bloated JSON, JSON declarations and it, it is nicely linked between resources. All right. And it has, okay, uh, this is kind of first look on how clean and it's easy to understand that. Even though this file is a bit hard to understand because there's a multiple resources. If you go to the resource group bicep file, for example, you would see that this file has a target scope subscription. Uh, it defines region as a string East US and then it defines the resource group where it defines the tag Cloud Launch, Cloud Launch and Learn Marathon 2021, my new resource group. And once we deploy this, it's going to create a new resource group with the given name. All right. Okay. Now let's go back to the slides because we didn't start the demo portion yet. This is just a warm up. And next, uh, we look, uh, let's look into the bicep configuration file because that's the main focus. Uh, you can, uh, I will provide you with a link to learn more about uh, how to get started with Azure Bicep if you never tried that. But 
today we are going to focus more on uh, how we can custom customize the configuration of Azure Bicep. And this Bicep configuration file, uh, we'll look into what is this config file and how we can create one and why we would need one, uh, what benefits, what type of flexibility it brings in our to, the, to our coding style or uh, compliance that we are trying to put into our code plus how we can add one and what are the default configurations we can use right out of the box so in order to answer these questions we are going to focus on a demo that's going to come next but before that demo I want to just finish the slides uh, we will look into some Azure Bicep best practices in provisioning resources and then actually we'll uh, start the demo and in the demo, uh, what you see here before jumping into demo, I would like to show you this. Uh, I would like to show you the some uh, built-in rules that you can use right away that you see on the left side here. Uh, and as you see, it has no hard-coded environment URLs, and it has different levels of uh, wa uh, warning, error, and you can actually turn off these rules. By default, these rules are mostly are on a warning level, which I will show you. And then uh, while you are trying to, on the right side here, a screenshot shows you a snippet of code where we have a parameter which is uh, declared but never used. So in this case, if you want that rule to come up, give you a warning or even error, you can customize that type of behavior using the bicep config file. Okay, let's jump into the demo now and look at these uh, scenarios. Okay, so here uh, I'm going to come back to that bicep uh, starter file and I'm going to close all of this. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to go to the, this file called Web App Linux uh, Bicep. And what this bicep uh, code does is basically it defines the Azure region, which takes value from resource group. Then it app service plan name is defined here. And then we have some validations. It defines resource tags. And then it basically defines the name for our web app portal. And then, you know, it deploys this server farm, which is the uh, app service plan and after the app service plan is there, it deploys the actual site, uh, website, which refers to that app service plan. Um, and here's saying, you know, even though it seems like part coded, but here app plan, if you right click on app plan, uh, there's a lot of goodies that come from extension called bicep extension. Let me show you that to you. So if you go and type bicep here, this is the extension that actually powers the bicep code. And it's, um, so I highly recommend to install that if you are going to do anything on using the Azure bicep language. So that's first thing you need to do as a setup before we jump back to the file. Second, I would say, make sure that you have a bicep version installed. I'm going to use, um, Azure CLI, so AZ Bicep, if you have um, Azure CLI installed, which is cross-platform, you can type Azure Bicep, dash, dash, uh, Azure Bicep, and then type version. And it will give you this version information here. Let it come up first. All right, here we go. So here, once we put that uh, Azure by the version, it will bring back the version, and this is the latest as of this recording. Okay, and uh, why I'm bringing that because in order to use this bicep config file, you need to make sure that your bicep version is 0 0.4 or above. All right, uh, that's that's very important to know. All right, so if however, if you don't have one and you want to install, for example, you want to install one. Then what you can do, you can just come and say AZ uh, Bicep help, okay? And here you would see the way how you can upgrade your version as they're shown here. You can 
you know follow this command or you can list the versions to check which is the latest so you can up update that one and if you don't see uh, the way how you can do that the last thing that you can do is just update the Azure CLI and then you will get this Azure CLI need to be 2.28 or above that's the version that you need to have all right that's all about setup and what you need to have in place now let's go back and here where we were, we were on web app Linux bicep file okay I'm going to zoom back so here uh, we have app plan and this application service plan is used here so but it might be complicated for you okay why we have these two resources what are these parameters are doing here so there's a nice way you can visualize that by clicking here on the right side you have uh, Azure Bicep Visualizer and once we click on that it will give us this nice visualization in terms of you know how your application plan and the websites are connected so these are the two resources that we have if you go and take a more complex uh, resource deployment for example if you go and take multi deployment one that we have here and click on the same icon again here all right and then you will see that we have another nice visualization that's actually visualize all the resources here on the right side and you can zoom in and zoom out and it will show you resource groups and every detailed um, resource that's part of this deployment which is pretty neat all right i'm going to switch back now to the same file web app linux bicep where we were and the purpose here is uh, just to show how we can add a new bicep config file okay so because at this moment we don't have any and in order to do that I'm going to add a new variable here or new parameter let's add a new parameter and we're gonna call this new parameter environment type env environment type string all right as you see here we define the parameter v but we never use that that's why you would get here environment type this declare is declared but never used the good thing is that once you click on this link it will take you to that rule that's called no unused parameters and in our case it's going to be it will be it's going to navigate you basically to this site here's a url it's a Azure Resource Manager, Bicep, Linter, uh, and I'm going to have that in the links so you can use that one. But here you see there is uh, no unused parameters. This is the one that we got to complain about. So all of them, again, all of these rules are defined. And in order to use the Linter rules, again, you need to have Bicep version 0.4 or later. So once we click on these unused params, it will give the uh, explanation what it means and it's a value in bicep configuration file to customize the rules and settings so you can click on this bicep configuration file and this is the basically default setup that comes with analyzer uh, and that's what we have in place okay so again if you want to learn more about that you can always navigate here on the left side to the linter and then click on linter rules and then deep dive into each rule what we just did we, use, we looked into unused variables one this rule here okay there are much more all right so I'm going to switch back to the screen and here instead of fixing this if you want that rules to appear on your bicep file there's a way to do that and as you see here on the left we have this bulb I'm going to click on that this bulb icon okay and I will say disable linter rule and voila once I disable that actually within given this scope and our scope here is actually we are inside the samples folder here as you see it's going to create this new file called bicep config.json 
and if you click on that file you would set it defines the profiles don't get confused with this this is just a profile where this config file is used it will tell uh, credentials pre pre precedence uh, it's a, and then here's the analyzer this is the main part where you need to look and then for no hardcore environment variables here, here we have level warning okay and for no unused parameters we have off we switched off that parameter if we uh, let me uh, switch back to the file again before doing anything so if you switch back to the file as you see there is no squiggly line nothing here it's everything clean and open but if you go and say okay uh, we are going to in terms of these levels there are you can either have error you can have it as an info or you can switch it off or put the warning in our case let's put this as an error because we don't want that to happen in our uh, bytes of files so if you put it as an error and we switch back to web app then this time this will appear as an error so what does it mean error error means that if you would go and try to deploy this file even though this is not like required it can pass it because we defined it as an error it's not going to be able to compile into the arm json template but if you want to bypass that uh, then you need to make sure that in your bicep config file you set the uh, you set the level of this rule of this linting rule into warning then or you can switch it off so once you put the warning it will not be an error so it's not there but you will have this warning okay all right so this is kind of how you can add that one but let's look at uh, if you want to add the azure linter rule as is again you can always go ahead and use the settings that i showed on the web page so i'm going to switch to another uh, bicep github repo that i'm uh uh, that I have which is called um, and this was the uh, things that we just show so now I'm going to switch on another github repo which is uh, called learn bicep and this is the github repo I'm going to bring it back uh, this is the github repo that I want to show everybody because there is some more uh, neat features that are uh, added there so in repositories we'll click on learn bicep and under this learn bicep you would see that you have uh, azure bicep blog posts which are f uh, how you can do different things using the azure bicep like how you can uh, protect your sensitive information by integrating azure key vault and any other things that you see here but the main part here is that i want to draw your attention on uh, actions here which are the github workflow actions and under this action you see that we have this deployment main site which is the workflow that deploys but how this workflow works uh, this workflow actually going to pick up uh, let me go back to learn bicep and into workflows uh, main deployment so what this deployment file does is basically it takes from the if there's a check into the main branch or the release branches it's going to take the set the environment for linting it's going to validate uh, my code using the azure credentials that i have and it's going to run the let me make it bigger it's going to run this pre-flight validation okay and once this uh, validation uh, is going to take the environment type that's defined on the uh, parameter okay which in our case we define on top of the file okay environment as a test here this is the environments that define on top of the yaml steps so we have validation step we have a uh, after validation step we have deployment step where after linting and validation it actually takes that file from this given location which is under the deploy folder here 
we have uh, main bicep and basically deploy set based on the environment type in our case in our case it's a test so in order to do that what we are going to do is i'm going to switch back to the visual studio code and the, the correct file is this one so here under visual studio code uh, learn bicep folder what we have we have this deploy folder and under deploy folder uh, everybody can see that we have a main bicep so we are going to click on that main bicep and this is the main bicep file that actually has parameterized definition of app service app service plan and storage account that get deployed using the configuration map that's uh, using the test uh, prod or dev uh, settings depending on which one we have and environment type is defined in the beginning and these are the allowed um, options so here before uh, so why I came here in this file we are going to type something and we'll see its effect based on Azure Bicep config file I'm going to switch here to Azure Bicep Azure Bicep config file that's defined on a root level on our repo and here we have an, uh, no hard code environment URLs no unused parameters as a warning we have error on no unused variables so if you have a variable that we don't use it will throw an error let's look at it so I'm going to switch back to main bicep and here as a variable I'm going to define a new variable let's say variable test me and it's going to be something like new entry so as you see we type this but uh, it's red squiggly line appear right away and if we hover over that then you would said it would say okay variable is declared but never used so this is the error and why it is error we can actually turn this error into warning and make this file compile and how we do that so let's actually have this let's say use our let's say we don't want to we want to make sure there's no variable so if we check in this code it's actually going to check in but if you try to build this into arm json it will throw an error so let's build this file and see what happens to build this file so what we need to do is we need to type az build and then uh, dash dash f this is the location of the file it is under deploy and main so what we did here is that we just trying to build this bicep file and what does az bicep build so i need to make sure I didn't make any typo here AZ bicep build and what should happen now is that once we press on enter it will try to go and build a main.json file but we in the bicep config file we have this error so as you see it didn't succeed right we have this error it says that it's declared but never used now what we are going to do is we are going to go back to the same rule in bicep config json and this time for unused variables we are going to make we are going to make that rule uh, softer we are going to say okay warning is fine you know we don't want to fail for this let's just have a warning and once we change that let's go ahead and rerun the same command that we tried on a first first run right it's the same command here so let's run this command now and this time when we run we should get the warning but it should build the file so how we would know that we would know that from here if we zoom in you would see that main.json has been created and main.json is basically arm, uh, arm template of the bicep code that we created which has environment types and everything that we had there okay that's all cool and this is the place where, where test me 
variable is actually defined in defined in our arm json template so next thing what we are going to do is we're just going to kick off this deployment and see you know what it does so to do that uh so let's look what changes we have we have a bicep config file we made the change we made the change in bicep we introduced unused variable and we don't need this json file we can discard this so let's discard this change all right so we did that so let's do the uh, check-in and see what happens so we are going to look into our git let's make sure we have everything git fetch all right cls git status so we are on the we need to make a git pool hopefully there wouldn't your local chains will um, all right bicep config so what we're gonna do we're gonna discard it and then do the change because there's something coming out of uh let me discard this change and then we'll put it back discard change we'll put it all right so let's see what's next here cls git fetch Hit pull. Okay, this time we pull everything. Git status. So we have main that bicep modified. We are going to modify the. Now we are going to modify the uh, other file, which is the, basically the bicep dot config JSON. We want to make sure it's actually for unused variables. It is. It's a warning, it's not the error. All right, so all good. Now, next thing to do, let's check our files. I think we didn't save this yet. That's why it doesn't show up, git status. Okay, let's add these files git commit so here would say you know update updating the files updating the bicep config config and main bicep files okay git push Okay, let's uh, check this change into our main branch now. Git checkout main git fetch. Let's get everything. Hopefully. Okay, let's merge from development. So before merger, let's look at our actions here so we don't have anything going on at the moment that's good all right now on our check-in something should light up let's do that so here git merge development let's see what happened git status git push so we have two new commits to our main branch and everything went uh, okay so we made our commit now let's see what happens actually in our in our actions here so we see that actually build is kicked in and this build is going to basically lint validate and then deploy those things into into the subscription that we are referencing okay and I don't want you to wait here 
but you will see that you know it's going to lint validate and then start a deployment okay so while deployment is going on here it's all going to it's using the let me look at it deploy bicep so it's going to use my other subscription which is here at the portal dot azure i'll just show you that um, it's everything is going fine so in our case it's called we are going to get the um, resource group uh, and we'll get something like web app name that will start with demo plan 21 okay so let's uh, so basically uh, the at the end of this deployment as you see everything succeeded what we should see we should see that deployment actually succeeds and we get the uh, deployment of the file in our um, in our uh, in our Azure subscription okay so what we covered here is uh, taking into account the time I want to cover what we just covered here so in our case what we covered here is we looked into uh, what is the Azure Bicep language is then we looked into why learn Bicep language okay then uh, after that we looked into the Bicep configuration file we looked into the sound best practices and linting rules that are available to be used and we looked into certain demos that we had there all right so now going forward I want to show this how you can get connected with me and uh, get information from that learn bicep github you can also look into this bicep project on github and the uh, microsoft docs that i uh, referenced during this presentation and you can also check the tutorial on azure bicep where you can get step-by-step -step, uh, microsoft learn instructions if you want to get started with azure bicep i hope all this is um, going to help you uh, and if you get stuck somewhere or you have some more questions please uh, feel free to reach out to me on linkedin okay i would be more than glad to help you and again thank you for joining uh, today to this session i'm very glad that uh, you have interest to learn azure and azure bicep is a new kit in the corner which is evolution over arm templates and it is there to simplify your life while managing Azure resources and Azure Bicep config file is there to customize your development environment and make sure that with uh, Bicep extension you can put all the knobs in place that's, uh, that that actually uh, compliant with your work environment and with your teams uh, and uh, again uh, let me repeat here is bicep config file you would have better flexibility to customize your bicep code and how you want them to be compiled or not and based on that uh, thank you again uh, check the other sessions on festive tech calendar and please uh, visit the cloudmarathon.com and ask me anything about azure bicep or anything that you see in addition to that there is azure bicep first look linkedin course uh, that i also uh, highly recommend to look into and let me know what you think about that thank you everyone thank you organizers have a great festive month and enjoy learning azure with festive tech calendar thank you bye for now